What's up, everyone? I'm Brian Peterson, and we're at Full Sail University. We're hitting you with another how-to video. This time, it's compositing green screens. Like I said before, they built a little set, but they're really relying heavily on green screens to finish telling their story. So let's fill in the blanks, let's complete our Star Wars fan film, and let's meet our compositing instructors. <laughs> Here I am, guys. I'm with industry pros and full sale instructors, Pedro and Juan. Guys, what are we getting into today? As compositors, our job is to take all these assets that were created on the set and all these elements and put it together to make one final hole, to make sure that it looks like everything was shot with right. one single camera. So today we're gonna focus on that, try to take a shot that is shot in green screen on set. Pretty much how to pull out a key by first doing proper color management inside of the software. We're gonna do a little bit of soft key, edge detailing, and then we're gonna to try to wrap everything up by adding the background, doing a little bit of color correction to kind of merge everything together, right. and then final grading. Sweet, all right, well where do we start with all of this? What do we need to do? So when we're bringing in footage, the footage itself has to also be color managed before mm -hmm. you actually go ahead and, and work in the comp. So the first thing that we're gonna do by default, this is gonna be set to whatever the working space is. So it's gonna look very washed out. Right. It's not gonna have too much contrast in there. By default, uh, After Effects doesn't show you the Alexa color space, so you wanna show all available profiles and then you will be able to access the Alexa color spaces gamut. So we're gonna go ahead and choose the 800 for, for now. So for this shot, we have two areas that are unbalanced. So we have one area that's nice and it's very nice and even lit, and then we have another area that seems like it has a yeah. hot spot. So essentially, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide this into two separate keys, one for this side of the stream and that for one for that side of the stream. So for that, I'm gonna create two adjustment layers. And then I'm gonna drag the key light effect. All right, so. We're gonna start with the left side and we're gonna pull a key first from that side. So what we want to do is we go back to the intermediate result and then we're gonna copy the mask, put it on the top here, paste it, and then we can invert that mat. You see that the initial key that we did, is not that great mm -hmm. because this is the one that has the most imbalance right. uh, in the shot. So what we wanna do is, I'm gonna use a little trick here. So instead of clicking every time that I want something, I'm just gonna click once, hold out the Alt key, and that tells me essentially where that range might be better off. The important thing is for this primary key, we're not trying to retain any of the edge detail that is located on these mm -hmm. areas. We're gonna train some. So in this case, I'm not gonna to touch any of these. I'm just gonna focus on clip blacks just a little bit to kind of pull the mat just slightly. Uh, so we could do a little bit of screen softness. So let's put like a value of two in there, just very subtle. But if you see right there, the benefits of having two keys is that I'm able to tweak one independent from the other and never have to just try to use one to get every detail once or right. the other. So when we're creating the mat, um, we have to focus on the holdout mats, right? Making sure that the areas that we want to keep uh, stay intact. So the other thing that we were talking about is uh, pulling uh, mats for detail. So essentially hair detail and stuff like that. Uh, if you see, we're not focusing on anything other than the alpha. Um, so we are bringing back all those little nuances that were lost. So the same technique is applied here where we use the soft keys for left and right, like we were saying before. And then we're also doing subtraction of some of the areas that we don't like about the set. And then we will move over to the actual comp. This is where everything comes in. Um, so this is what we have so far, right? But as we key it, now we're gonna get to this scenario. Right. So in order to produce that, let me go ahead and do a quick uh, kind of demonstration how that is actually working. So turning off all these layers right here, let's go ahead and shut that off. So we're gonna start with just this basic uh, alpha that we generated. From there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test if it comps against the background. We still have the green spill, we still have all this stuff, so we will comp it against the background. In order to be able for us to be able to put that against the background, we need to figure out how to pre-multiply this or how to apply this alpha to the original shot so we can see through those areas. So that's the first test that we gotta do. Could we put it against the background? Yes, okay, so we're good. So we're not seeing any contamination other than the green screen. Right. So we'll test out through the sequence, we'll play the sequence, and then we'll actually evaluate how the mat is doing. If we're getting some webbing or anything like that, I can see some webbing happening on the edges mm -hmm. there. So we start evaluating those things. Okay, so I need, I need to pull the mat just a little bit back on that area. So I will work only on those sections independent from the rest. So we'll do a garbage mat for that area, work on that area. So that's how we start refining the mat and start getting the mat to where it needs to be to a production level. When we're applying the mat, there's a couple of ways that you could do it. Now, I prefer this 
different method uh, for it. I'm using adjustment layer for that, and I look for something called set mat. And then let me leave it there and go here to our effect zone, and you will see that there's the set mat there. Right. And with the set mat, what we're doing is essentially the effect. We're saying what layer of all this you want to use as your mat. The only thing that this is saying is instead of having this layer underneath the mat and set that layer to track mat, which is fine, it will work the same way if you see. Right. The pro only problem with that is now I have to make sure that my spill suppression is over that layer that I want to affect. But when you're working with other artists that maybe are not as experienced or anything like that, you need to show them what you're doing. So you need to leave that availability of, hey, this is where I'm doing this. So that will leave us with a little bit less room for error scenario. Got it. So the next thing is the spill suppression. Like I said, you could apply it directly to there. But then in the spill suppression setup, we want to go ahead and apply it to an adjustment layer. That way you have other ways of actually working with different edges, different spills, and different regions of that specific mat. So that way we're able to take away all this green that is not supposed to be right. on the shot, but leaving all the stuff that is original from the main shot. The next stage after we pull that and we get the background is bringing back some of that detail in there. That hair detail that we talked about before, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that up as a pre-comp and we're gonna bring one for the left side, one from the right side to be able to tweak them independent from each other. And then what I'm gonna do is all, is all about blending operations more than the key itself. We're gonna go ahead and set that to an overlay. So what we're doing is just a little blending trick uh, to get everything working uh, correctly with the shot. We have all the hair that we needed, and that's the fine detail that makes a great key, is the edge detail and the edge quality. Mm -hmm. Make it look realistic. Exactly. Uh, moving on to the next idea is uh, a little bit of the integration of the background and the foreground and, and the levels and how far away they are from each other. So for this, I'm gonna do a quick level check. And a level check, as we're working, usually we're constantly, constantly adjusting our levels and checking foreground, background, midground to see if we have a good separation between right. the elements. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the background and we're gonna say, okay, we have the background, we have some levels applied to it. Let's work. The, does the client want a little bit darker or a little bit lighter? So we can start working in those scenarios. Do we need more tint or less tint? The next stage will be uh, to do a saturations check. It's meant to see how the shot colors are working with each other. And we could see we still have colors that we need to massage and we need to go through. So when that is said and done, then you will do the final color correction. And that's, again, in our direction uh, from the client and right. everything else. And that's where Lumetri and all these other cool tools that After Effects has come into play. Mm -hmm. So Lumetri works the same way. So we will add those final colors, all, usually in an adjustment layer. And then it will allow you to pick and choose what you want style-wise, right, color-wise. Uh, depends on the temperature that you want to go with. Right. So Lumetri is very easy. You drag and drop it. Just turn it on in there, drag and drop it in and then you will get the Lumetri color. But that's pretty much it. That's what our compositors are doing, the shots. Uh, that shot looks shots way stuff. better than what we started with, that's for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>if you guys like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And to watch more videos just like this, be sure to check them out. May the force be with you. Always.